see you in brown. Amen, amen, amen. Good to be in America, is that what you said? Yeah, amen. Well, I'm sure you prayed a little bit on that trip. <laughs> you take a redneck and do that, you're, you're doing something, amen. Well, why don't you pray for us right now? and the rooms, even though first thing right off the bat, Philip broke one of Rhonda's stuff that she had brought for it. Right off the bat, I mean, he, he ain't been in there 30 seconds and, and, and knocked it off the table. That's just how he is. He's been that way all his life. <laughs> but y'all know that going into the thing. But I appreciate it so very much for everything and the kids and their cards and everything else. What a blessing that is. I appreciate you being in the house of the Lord this morning. May, may I uh, reiterate what Jordy said during the devotion this morning. Did you come bring God some leftovers this morning? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. What did you come bring? You, listen, his text was over there about bringing the lame and, and all of that stuff and making God's place. You're talking about the sacrifices. They're bringing lame sacrifices and everything else. And they said, offer that to the governor. See if he'll take it. Amen. 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 I hope what you got today, and you, it ain't too late. Right. Right. That's right. It ain't too late to stop what you're doing. Yeah. And pray. Amen. Amen. I say, God, I, I don't want to come in the house and be a drag. Amen. 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 I want to be a blessing. Amen. 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 All right, all right. I had to get that off my chest. Amen. Good preaching, George. Yeah. Well. And we got a new baby with us this morning. Amen. 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 Brother Ty, would you stand up and introduce us this morning? There you go. She is pretty too. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. So, you ready? Let's do it. What we got? 144.
the stars, one and all. He knows how much sand is on the shore. He sees every sparrow that falls. He made the mountains and the seas. He's in control of everything. All creatures, great and small. And he knows my name. some sinus stuff, unloosen this choker here for a minute. <clears throat> Amen. <laughs> You've been my friend for so long, you were right when I was wrong. I can't repay all the love you've given me. Let me tell you how good he's been to me. Hallelujah. Oh, he's been so good to me. Boy, I can't go no farther. Let me tell you what he's done for me. He breaks down and he picked me up out of hell. Bobby said it best last Sunday in Sunday school. He didn't just reach down his hand. He got down just like that mama picked that little baby up. He picked me up and he carried me up to higher places. I've got a mansion in heaven just waiting for me. You've been my friend for so long. You were right when I was wrong. I can't repay all the love you've given me. You 
were my friend when no one else cared. I was alone, but you were there. Lord, you're the best thing that's ever happened to me. And I owe it all to you, Lord. And all I have is yours, Lord. So take my life. And what you have me For I'm your child and you're my father. I'm the clay and you're the potter, Lord. You're the best thing that's ever happened to me. Oh, I don't own nothing. Listen to this second verse. Those borrowed treasures. And borrowed dreams, all life's joys you've given me. Where troubles come, you're always there to make me smile. So come what may, I will be there. I love you, Jesus, God, only Son. Lord, you're the best thing that's ever happened to me. Take my life and make it what you'll have in me. For I'm your child and you're my father. I'm the clay and you're the potter. You're the best thing that's ever happened to me. Now I can relate to this third verse more than any of the other ones. Y'all listen for every time that I have failed. Each time I stumbled and sin prevailed. You picked me up and you planted my feet on solid ground. Woo! Why you love me? I sure don't know. But I keep on singing as I go. You're the best thing that's ever happened to me. And I owe it all to you, Lord. And all I have is yours, Lord. So take my life and make it what you'll have in me. For I'm your child and you're my father. I'm the clay and you're the potter, Lord. You're the best thing that's ever happened to me. the best thing. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Amen. And you say, it, if you don't agree with that, then you ain't never experienced it. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says that you're going to die in your sin. Right. That's right. Amen. But somebody delivered me from mine. Yes, He's the best thing that's ever happened. Yes, hallelujah. The one thing. Yes, let's stand up and we'll take up our offering this morning. It's good to be in the Lord's house. Good to have our visitors with us. God bless you. Thank you. All right. Brother David Glass. Yes, sir. Good to see you this morning, brother. Uh, would you pray for us? Heavenly Father, we come to you today. Ask you to bless us all today. Appreciate the many blessings that you bestow on all of us, Lord. And forgive us when we take those things for granted, Lord. Ask you to be with our church family, be with our loved ones. As you be with this offering again, Lord. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Sister, y'all come on.
the children of Israel what marked their what marked even though they had God had given them land on the other side of Jordan, what marked them entering into the land of Canaan was crossing over the Jordan River. That's right. That's right. That's right. Go ahead. Do you know that there's a Jordan River you and I got to cross? It's called the Great Deep. There's water up above us, according to the Bible. And we got to cross over. We've been wandering in this wilderness long enough. But our heavenly Joshua's going to come get us. And we going to the other side. Praise his holy name. Well, shake your neighbor's hand. Greet him with a smile.
chapter 2, Mark chapter 2, Mark chapter 2, amen. We had a good time in Arbana, and I appreciate all the church folks that come out and, and uh, supported their effort of revival. And uh, I appreciate y'all very much. Amen. Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2. All right, verse number one. And again, he entered into Capernaum. Jesus spent a lot of time in Capernaum. Galilee, ran that Egypt. After those days, it was noise that he was in the house. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And straightway, many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. Our Savior was a preacher. And he was a man. Don't, don't, don't be buying into this sissy Jesus that the world made him out to be today. He was a man. And it says, And they came unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. That means that there was four people who told me. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. Now notice that they uncovered the roof where Jesus was. They couldn't get in, but they saw where he was at. So they climbed up on the roof and started tearing the stuff down. Jesus. They wasn't interested in getting into the room. They was interested in getting to him. <laughs> Hallelujah. You imagine Jesus preaching and all of a sudden sheetrock dust starts falling on him and everything. Else. Yeah, man. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, and when Jesus saw their faith, their faith, yes. not the guy sick of palsy's faith, not like a bunch of fake healers today, that right. says the reason you didn't get healed was because your lack of faith. Right. It didn't matter if you had faith or not. When Jesus touched you, buddy, you got healed. And it was the same way with the apostles that they had been given that. And when the apostles died, friend, that died. You say, well, what is that stuff on teeth? Faith. Amen. Exactly right. Amen. And when, now, and that's not to say Jesus can't heal and won't heal today because he can but I'm saying there, does, there isn't a person with that power today. That was for the apostles. The apostles, they had apostolic signs. And they were given to them that they could heal. Amen. Amen. And so much that they'd take Paul's apron. His work apron that he made tents with. Lay it on the sick and they'd be whole, made whole. They laid sick kids along by the way so Peter, when he passed by, that his shadow. Nobody's got that power today. If they do, they're a bunch of sorry, no good vomits because instead of trying to make money, they ought to be down there at the hospital clearing out the cancer ward. Of the little children. Yeah. Right. That's right. Amen. Yeah. I'd start with the kids. If I had that gift, I'd start with the kids. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, he said, uh, 
When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the sick of palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. My, ain't that something? Now, let me read a little bit more. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. There's always some. Why does this man thus speak blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God only? Bingo! He's God. Amen. And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reason within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your heart? Whether it is easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and take up thy bed and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Amen. Heavenly Father, I pray you'd help me. God, my body's wore out, my mind's scattered, and I pray that you get it all together and, and help me to preach today, Lord, and help me to say what you'd have me to say and not to say the things that I well, might say. And Lord, I just pray that you bless in Jesus' name, amen. amen. I had a little note in my blue Bible. While I was reading this, another day I got the thing out, my old blue Bible was a Thompson chain, and, and uh, I got it out and was just looking over it and seeing what kind of notes I had, because I was thinking about maybe possibly getting it restored, and um, I, I, I looked and I seen that, I seen a, a note there, it said, how far are you willing to go? Talk about the four. Bringing the man sick of palsy and tearing the roof off yeah. and getting him down to Jesus. How far are you willing to go? I know, I know what it's like, man. I know what it's like. I know what it's like to knock on doors. I know what it's like to witness to people. I know what it's like. You knock on the door and then you're like, you're running away immediately because you didn't want to engage in the first place. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, there wasn't home, so it wasn't the will of God. Yeah. Oh, come on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Or that neighbor or that, that person at work or something, you know, you try to talk to them about it and, 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 and somebody interrupts or something happens and you say, well, it must not be the will of God. It is the will of yeah. God. Yeah. It's God's will that none should perish, That's but that right. all should That's come right. to repentance. That's right. Amen. Amen. How far are you willing to go? Yeah. Yeah. That's good, preacher. Yeah. Amen. Some not very far. Right. Yeah. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. This you can answer this question as an individual. We can answer this question as a church. How far are we willing to go to reach the lost and bring them to Jesus? Yeah. Amen. Of concerning your obedience. How far are you willing to go? How far are you going to obey the Lord? I'm going to tell you some of where some of you are at right now. You're at the place now where God don't even ask you to do something. Because you've turned him down so much. Have you grown all you want to grow? Have you gone far enough? I see people in their Christian life, they reach a spiritual plateau. And they're like maxed out. Man, you ain't a credit card. Amen. You can keep going. Just increase the limit on that thing. Amen. Right? Just keep going. Amen. Amen. God's got a large bank account, friend. <laughs> I'm telling you, he can settle the debt anytime he wants to. Amen. How far? Some say, I'm going to go all the way. And some say that. I was got to thinking again about Jordy when Jordy, you can tell when it's Holy Ghost preaching because it makes you want to preach. Yeah, that's true. Amen. 
Amen. That some come in here and they say, man, I'm, 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 I'm ready to go. Let's burn the world down together. They made a vow. That's what it said in that verse. They made a vow. They made a vow to offer a sacrifice. I'm going to give the first bull of my flock and I'm going to give it to the Lord. They made a vow to do that. Right. When that bull comes out, it's a black bull. And it's got a white face on it, and it's bringing a lot of money at the. So you got this other one over here that was born. It was born second or third, but it's it's got a bum leg. So I, I vowed that first one, but I'm bringing this one. Yeah, go ahead. God says that stuff don't fly with me. How far, how far are you willing to go? Amen. Notice number one, they got involved. Yep. 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 Some of you ain't even got involved. Yeah, that's true. Go ahead. Go ahead. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. Let me tell you why it's important. Y'all listening up? Yes, this is a good Sunday morning crowd. Let me tell you why it's important to get involved. In church. Yeah. Right. Because Jesus died for the church. Now, he didn't specifically die for Mount Pleasant Missionary Baptist Church. He died for a collective group of body of believers that are saved, that he saved them. That's who he died for. Do y'all understand? You got that? Yes. But he, but all this, in the, all is related to a local church. We have a local church here. Yeah. It's a local visible church, man. And, and yep. we, we meet here. We, we, we pay our tithes. We give our offerings to the Lord. Right. And we try to uh, uh, help people out. We try to do what we can for the Lord. And, right. and, 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 and we can do better. Amen. Amen. We can do more. Amen. Preach on. Yes, sir. But I'm going to tell you, we ain't going to be able to do very much if you don't get involved. What about you? Go ahead, Go ahead, We're trying to make sure that our kids have a Christian education Amen. Go ahead. through our Sunday school and teaching programs that they'll grow up knowing who God is. Amen. And when they reach the age of accountability, they'll be born again, they'll be saved. And they'll be productive Christians in the future. Go ahead. You say, is that in the Great Commission? Absolutely, Absolutely. it is. Teaching and baptizing. Teaching them whatsoever things I've commanded you, and lo, I'm with you all the way, even into the end of the world. The first teaching is teaching people how to be saved. With that in mind, Miss Iris, did she she went back there in the back? Y'all got to remind her. I was supposed to give her. I'll give y'all. Give it to y'all, and then you can tell. Remind Miss Iris this because Miss Iris every week since I gave y'all a memory verse to learn, she's asked me personally, "Give me another one." Yeah, that's good. And then she quotes that memory verse back to me hey, each man. week. Good. And then I make them make her quote them all to make good. sure that she's remembered. Good. Wow. Amen. John chapter five twenty four is your memory verse. John five twenty four. And what I'm doing is giving memory verses that will help you when you're dealing with an individual about salvation that you can remember in your mind and even if you don't have a Bible there, you can share with them Scripture. Amen? <clears throat> verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death unto life. If you want to know what it says, that's what it says. Yep. Amen. They got involved. What kind of man, Todd, what do you think, what kind of man do you think it would be for four people to carry him sick of a palsy and tear a roof off to get him down there? He must have been a pretty good fella. Either he was a pretty good fella or those four had great faith. Yeah. And it could have been all of the above. I don't know. We don't know much about the story, but I'm going to tell you something. For them to put that much effort, right. yeah. 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 That's, true. that's quite a deal, ain't it? 
Yeah, I mean, that's a blessing right there. They got involved. Well, these four took action. Sometimes it's hard to get involved. Amen. If you're, if you're looking to get involved in our church, we have some old heads around here that are going to give you some trouble. I'm just telling you, because when you do something for 20 or 30 years, you've got a certain way of doing stuff. But don't let that discourage you. Amen. Amen. You can't let that discourage you. Listen, if, if I let that discourage me, I'd have quit a long time ago. You understand? You've got to realize that God is bigger than any situation that you'll face. And let me tell you this. Let me tell you a lesson I've learned a long time ago. If somebody's old, I'm respecting them. Regardless. If they're right or wrong, I'm respecting them. Amen. Amen. Sister Trixie's chewed me out more than one time. <laughs> Go ahead. Understand that? And she's given me the old Trixie eye before and, 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 and had, to, had to talk bad to me and everything else. But she's old. <laughs> Amen. And I respect her. Amen. Amen. And as a younger person... I'm going to take knowledge of that older person and I'm going to hear what they got to say. Good. Amen. Amen. Now, Miss Judy over here, bless her heart. Can, she, can we just go down through the list of old people? Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <clears throat> Miss Patty, I'm not asking, I'm not adding you to Judy's age. But I'm, but I'm just saying that some people are like this. Some people are like Miss Judy and Miss Patty. Now, Miss Judy and Patty have a wonderful talent for the Lord. And, they, and it's various, you know. They, they got various talents, all right? So here's what here's the type of person they are. When they, when they get a thought in their brain, it's like, it's like a hamster on a wheel, okay? And it's rolling around. Well, let me tell you something. That, that, that hamster used to have a screen door in front of him that would keep him from jumping out. But that screen door got broke years ago. And just whatever, that hamster, when he rolls around, whatever it said in his mind. Am I telling the truth? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Not everybody, not everybody when you're trying to do stuff, we're not all, we're trying to get involved and sometimes those things get in the way. You, you see what I'm saying? Because the way that we do things and the way that we operate, sometimes it don't seem like you can get involved. Here's what people do. The automatic, and, and the reason why a lot of these older people have been around and done this for Amen. a time or two, you know, yeah. and they know what's going on. And they've seen some things along the way. You always got to consider their wisdom. Amen. Are y'all listening? I know I made fun of and I was picking at them, and, but they know that I do that. But y'all understand that? There's some wisdom at play there. That's exactly right. Yes, sir. Don't let that stop you from getting involved. Yeah, amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's right. If I say something, don't let that stop you from getting involved unless I tell you to pack up your stuff and get out. Yeah. <laughs> amen. And the only reason that I do that is if you was trying to spread some false heresy and doctrine. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Other than that, you know, we can pretty much tolerate a whole bunch of stuff. Amen. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Y'all still with me? Yeah. It's hard for people sometimes. They want to serve the Lord, but it's hard for them to get involved. Right. That's good. Amen. That's true. Amen. Well, here's some good advice. 
This is why I tell people all the time that you come to church and you evaluate. Yeah. Right? You see how things go on. Yeah, that makes sense. Right? Right. And you see how things go on because if a person comes from another church and their church is used to doing something and then you come in here and you expect to do it here, it might not work so well. That's true. Amen. Are y'all listening? Amen. All right. Well, here's the deal. We want to get involved and we can't do what we need to do unless we're all involved in it. And let me explain something to you that have been straddling the fence about getting involved. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. There's a reward at the end of this thing. Amen. Yes, there is. That's right. Preach it, yes, it may be on the other shore, but it's there. And your family deserves you, sir, Amen. to get involved in church and to get involved in the Lord's work. You say, well, I can worship the Lord on the creek bank. Yeah, you sure can. But you can't do it scripturally. I'm just telling you, you can't do it scripturally because the Bible tells us that we're to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. And listen, you're going to have to have some funds to do that. Where are you going to get those funds at? It's going to be from a church. Amen. All right, to get involved. There's some things I understand about getting involved. How willing some are to help. Amen. And how willing some are to hinder. Now, if you have a tendency to be meaner than a copperhead snake, whether you're young or old, try not to say something. Amen. Amen. Try not to say nothing. Because the last thing we want to do is put a stumbling block in front of a young person that's trying to do something for God. Amen. I don't want to be a stumbling block for somebody that's trying to grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Help others get involved in the Lord's work. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another as so much the more as you see the day approaching. What is he exhorting? What is he telling them to do? What is he telling them to do in this text? What is he telling them to do? Somebody read the text. Bless God, please read it. What is he telling them to do? What is he exhorting them to do? Go to church. That's it. He's telling them to go to church. To assemble together with the brethren. That's what we call church. Amen. He said, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. As a matter of some is, we shouldn't forsake that like they're doing in the last days. Boy, howdy. Am I, if I hit on a cord? How many churches today right now only meet on Sunday morning? They don't meet on Sunday night. They don't meet on Wednesday night because there's no desire to meet on those times. I had somebody tell me the other day and they was telling me that, that a big church there in Cersei, a big well-known church that used to have hundreds and hundreds of members. you got huge facilities. It's down to about 50, and they don't even have church on Sunday night or Wednesday night anymore. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a manner is, but, uh, as some is, but what should we be doing? We should be exhorting... As we see that day approaching. What day is that that's approaching? It's the coming of the Lord. We know He's coming. We can see it. So we're supposed to be exhorting people to come together. So what's the word exhort? What does it mean? Encourage. Mine ought to go to Webster's for this one. Well, you can look in your Bible. 
Your Bible will tell you what exhort is if you look all the places exhort in the Bible and just read them and you'll figure out what it is. But it's advice. It's advice that excites and ignites you. That's my hillbilly definition. Amen. So exhorting, I I know uh, like Mark Stroud is one of the greatest exhorters I've ever seen. He can get up in front of a crowd without a Bible open and have some wear somebody out on the piano. Yeah. A playing for nine million days. And uh, he can get up there and he can excite you. He can give you advice to come to that altar and get things right or stay in that pew or wherever and do something for God. Amen. And if you've got half a brain and half a heart in you, you're wanting to do whatever he's asking you to do. Amen. Why? Because God's given him that gift Amen. to do that. Yes. Let me tell you what exhorting we ought to be exhorting. We ought to be giving advice yes. to everybody around us. That in these last times we need to assemble together. Because we got something that the world needs. I guarantee you, we got something right here that every person that has you to working with, they need. Every neighbor down the street needs what we got here. And not because I'm the preacher, it's because God meets with us. Amen. Are y'all still with me? Yes, sir. All right. That's exactly right. So we ought to be exhorting. We ought to be exhorting to be obedient, to do good works, to pray, to surrender, to come to church. We ought to be exhorting. All right. They got involved, number one. Number two, they put forth the effort. Do you know that God always blesses every time we put forth an effort? Oh, it's amazing. We go out and witness and so win and, and knock on 25, 30 doors and none of them people come to church. But God sent a couple our way. Amen. 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 Why, why does that happen? Because God blesses the effort. How many VBSs have we had around this place and it, we went all in and put in, you made your time, you took off work or you did whatever, you, you spent all your time, weeks and weeks and weeks ahead of time preparing for the material, preparing, getting this everything ready and looking pretty and everything else and not to just to see God not save anybody. Have y'all seen that? Have y'all seen God not bless the effort ever since I've been here? I think ever VBS, I've seen somebody saved at ever VBS. And not just somebody saved, I've seen a bunch of somebody saved. Including that right there, amen. Amen. You see what I'm saying? If you put forth the effort, God will bless the effort. But we got to put forth the effort. Yep. Right on. What if we put that much effort into coming to church on Sunday? Yeah. Go ahead, preach. What if we put that kind of effort on Sunday night? Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Go ahead. Help us. What if we put that much effort on Wednesday night? Yeah. Come on. I know some of you teachers do. You teach your classes and you get everything ready. And and mine, I, I don't even want to tell you this because it's sad. Um there's nobody that studies harder than I do. I, I can promise you that. Amen. Yeah. I know that. But, but I'm lacking in a lot of other areas. Like I know these classes, like my mother's class, I know what she does for her class. She, every Wednesday night she brings them cookies or something. Or bake something for them. I'm not baking stuff for everybody. <laughs> I'm just not doing that. And then at my class when I go to GBI, Shan says, well, what did you get them something? Get them something. I can barely make myself get there. Amen. Amen. Do you, you understand what I'm talking about? Thank God for teachers that are putting in time and preparation and everything else. Thank God for that. Thank God for people that are putting the effort in, expecting God to do something, expecting it to be pleasing to God, expecting it to help somebody else. The reason why you're not enjoying church, ma'am, is because of the absolute zero you put into it. 
if you come in this place with something to put into there, you'll get something out of it. I mean, we've had our pastor appreciation, and and I, I and I preached last week, and I got I got a love offering there, brother Jim's, and and uh, and, and what I get paid each week. I was so happy to have an offering this morning that was above and beyond. Just to come in and say, man, Lord, it's good to be able to give this to you. Amen. Amen. What a blessing, man. Number three, you need to understand man's need. How far are you willing to go? Well, if you're willing to go very far, you're going to have to understand what man needs. That's good preaching right there. Amen. Amen. Now, everybody needs a bologna sandwich. Amen. To be an American. Fried bologna. Fried bologna. With garden ripe maters on it. Amen. Bless his holy name. I'm feeling something on that right now. That's true. But that's not man's greatest need. No. Man's greatest need is to be born again. Amen. Amen. Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. The greatest need man has is a spiritual need. That's right. That's right. And you got to understand that. I know people right now that's lost as a goose in a hailstorm, but they'll give and they'll go and they'll drive to feed the poor. I'm all for feeding the poor. I think we need to. I think there needs to be wells dug in Africa and everything else. I'm for all that stuff. But the greatest need is not that. The greatest need is Jesus Christ. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Until you fully understand what man's need, greatest need is, listen, they tore the roof off. To get to Jesus. Who paid for it? Have y'all thought about this? Who paid for the roof? Well, who was liable for it? Those four men that tore it apart. They were liable. Any judge in the, in the land would have said they were liable for it. But they was willing to pay. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. In your pursuit of helping people and trying to get man to reach his greatest need, you're going to have some stuff to work up. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Right. That's exactly right. Go ahead. Right. How many times I've been up here preaching and saw stuff just running down the aisle? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Amen. Yeah. Yep. 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 What's going on right here? That looks ugly. The carpet's coming apart. Because it's had so many fat people on it. <laughs> it's just stretched out. It can't handle it. <laughs> There's stains and scratches and things like that that people want to gripe about. But here's the deal. If you didn't have people... Amen. Clean cribs means there's no oxen in the stall. And if you got to dealing with people, you're going to deal with a mess. Amen. Let me just say this. While I'm on the subject, when you're dealing with bus kids, you're going to be dealing with a mess. If you're trying to give them their greatest need, that's right. That's helping us. Amen. It's, it's going to cost us some things. Amen. Ah, Buses yeah. are going to wear out. We're going to have to buy them. Yep. I mean, we're going to have to buy kitchenware and everything else. And Amen. we're going to have to slap them around the head and ears every now and then to keep them in line. Yep. It's going to cost some things. Yeah. That's, right. That's, right. That's, right. That's good. That's good. But it's worth it. Yeah. Absolutely. I know sometimes it don't seem like it. And it may have... It may have dawned on their mind as they was tearing the roof off and tearing the hole and said, listen, we're going to have to pay for this thing. Yeah. 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 
But one of the group said, yeah, but he needs Jesus. But he needs Jesus. Amen. 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 Uh-huh. Well, praise the Lord. Man's greatest need is a spiritual need. I'm almost done. Right here. Go ahead, preacher. They work together. They worked together. Amen. How far are you willing to go? Well, you're going to have to work together. When Nehemiah, I, the, y'all, the ladies have been studying Nehemiah and Ezra, ain't you? Y'all, are y'all have already built the temple probably. And, and y'all building the walls right now? Spoiler alert, they do it in 52 days. Yeah, it took it longer to study that, didn't it? Yeah. They built the wall in 52 days, but guess what? If you'll read, when you're reading through that, you'll notice everybody had a job to do. And everybody worked together. And, and listen, I wrote this verse down because I want you to hear it, because I want you to see it. I want you to see what they're talking about. And it came to pass, it's in Nehemiah chapter 4, and it came to pass from the time forth that... Uh, that uh, the half of my servants wrought in the work and the other half of them held both the spears and shields and the bows and the habergeons and the uh, rulers were behind all the house of Judah. So that some had 12 gauge shotguns and some had pistols and some had, but listen, they had their working tools. Half of them had them and half of them had defensive weapons. And some, I know how some of your brains work. You're saying, what's a habergeon? <laughs> it's like a coat of mail that covers your neck and chest area like that. They were, some group had to protect the other ones. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Good. Go ahead. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> Protection. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Amen. Amen. Protection because wolves come about. Yep. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Yep. Amen. Amen. So some job is to protect, and some job is doing the work. Right. If you're doing the work, I'm gonna do bless far my dead level best to protect you while you're Amen. Right. Yep. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And if somebody says something about it, they got me to deal with. Amen. And I know I'm not much, but man, I'll make a fuss. Yeah. Amen. 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 I'll distract you till real help comes. Amen. 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 Are y'all listening to what I'm trying to tell you? I know, I know. You done listen. You quit listening to me ten minutes ago. So, they, they, they work together. Yes. Good. Somebody asked me, we, we have, how, many, how many years? 13, 11, 13 years of Christian school? 13, 13 years of Christian school? One of the kids, as I said the other day, said, uh, Papa, why don't we have Christian school anymore? And I said, here's the deal. People that act spiritual, that people, listen, you want to check on the spirituality of somebody, sign them up in Christian education. Yeah, you think you look good, they look good on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, go ahead. Yep. But every day will prove the test. Yep. Because the devil is going to beat and... Amen. That's good. Let me tell you something what the devil hates. He hates for your child to have a Christian education. And he'll do everything he can exactly right. to overthrow that. Amen. And when people are working together every day, it's harder. Yeah, it is. Amen. Amen. Exactly. Right. Go ahead. Are y'all, are y'all, y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yes. It's hard, man. It's hard. You can be around anybody for 15, 20 minutes, and you can start to see a little bit of that flesh coming out. Yeah. No matter how hard they're trying to be spiritual, right. it's coming. Yeah. Amen. Right. But the Lord Jesus Christ, they've never yeah, been a moment like that. Hey, Amen. Right, right. Amen. Right. But somebody asked me, they said this, and this is why I said that. 
They said, uh, why don't you let so-and-so work there? Why are you doing this and why are you doing that? Why are you, because we've had numbers of people work and everything else. And I say this, I always say this, just because somebody has a bad quality don't mean they don't have a good quality. Amen. And some days their good qualities will outweigh the bad. That's right. Amen. Amen. But they're still productive. That's right. Amen. And so learning to deal with Christian people for almost all my life, I've learned that there's good qualities and bad qualities, and you don't throw the baby out with a dishwasher. Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's right. Yep. Yeah. That's just a little practical wisdom. I'm I'm 50 something years old. I'm allowed to give a little of that, ain't I? I'm not as old as some of y'all, but I still got a little bit to impart. Amen. Amen. Paul planted Apollos water. God gave the increase. Amen. That's right. And the last point I want to make is this: they were persistent. How far are you willing to go? Depending on how persistent you are. That's right. They didn't quit. Amen. That's right. They did not quit. That's good. When you're carrying four people, I mean, you're carrying one person, four people carrying one person, you can't let two take a break. That's right. I mean, you picture they're holding him up because it says in other gospels to take up your couch or your bed. So you got four corners there. They're holding this man. Yes, sir. You drop one, you're in trouble. Amen. That's right. Right. I went over to. I was in Providence one time. I was asked to preach a funeral, a Providence graveside, for somebody on the river, Red River. I made a lot of friends with people, druggies and everything else over on Red River. Red River Shore. Yep, there you go. And uh, most people fear to go through there. I can go through there any time. Because I've preached most of them's funerals and their weddings and everything else. Amen. But they asked me to preach. I visited this lady one time, and they asked me to preach a funeral. And she was a large lady. Big or small, it's got nothing to do with anything other than weight. But she was a large lady. And Bradford Funeral Home was putting it on. that They were doing it and because they was the cheapest they could find, you know, to do a graveside service at that time. And they said, and as they was leaving, there was just two girls there. And they had to take that casket and put it in the hole, in the ground. And uh, they said, Brother Scotty, I mean, what? We're probably going to have to wait here a couple hours for somebody to come and help us. And I said, well, I can help you. I said, what do you need me to do? I got my suit on and everything else, you know. I said, what do you need me to do? And they said, well, grab that strap, and we're going to get on this side, and you're going to get in the middle, and we're going to pick that up, and we're going to set her off in the ground. Uh, funeral homes do an amazing job about Making it, making death not look so deathy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But right. in the in the end, y'all know you're going in a hole. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. A box in the ground. Yeah. That's right. Right. Yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, they didn't tell me they're two on that side. I'm here on this side. I do a suicide wrap on both hands. You know, and I didn't know the course. I didn't ask too many questions. <laughs> And I should have. But we picked her up. They got both hands on, the, on one side over there and let her down. Well, they, it got hung down there and they let theirs go. And I'm holding it all. Well, guess what happened? Suicide rap. I can't stand the torque. I'm off in the hole. Suit on and everything. <laughs> I bounce around, get the straps out of there for them and everything else. Sorry, ma'am. <laughs> it happens, man. So I know the, 
the, the uniqueness of everybody's got to work together. And you got to be persistent. Don't give up. That's right. Keep on going. Keep on doing it. The reward's worth it all. Let's stand to our feet. We'll have a verse of invitation. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time we've had together this morning. Now, Lord, I pray you bless this invitation. God, may we see our desire to bring people to Jesus. God, may we be exhorting folks. Give them advice that excites them. That we got something. The Lord shows up at our place. God, I pray that you would deal with hearts whatever you've laid on them. And I pray you bless this invitation in Jesus' name. Amen.
can't say. That's right. There's no one here that can except for the Lord Jesus Christ. 